I gave a word similar to this when I had my Instagram ministry, take up your mat and walk, which is a really powerful part of the Bible where Jesus heals the man at the pool of Bethesda who had been lame for 38 years and he heals him. And he says to him, take up your mat and walk. And then later Jesus actually seeks the man out and says to him now, go and sin no more or something worse may happen to you. And a lot of, a lot, of, you know, I tend to really try to think about the context of the scripture. If you are, because I'm, I'm, my mind's thinking about all the other people that were lying there next to this invalid man. Now, remember all those other people every day, they would try to go into these healing waters and they would block off the man, not on purpose, but they would just rush into the water to get healed. And every day it wouldn't work because they would the next day do it again. And every day the, the man that Jesus would heal would be able to get in the water. The thing is, if you are content with the fixes of this world, with the comfort of this world, the temporary healing, the temporary things of this world, however that is. And I'm, I am going to say some specific things and... I'm not judging you, but you got to understand that Jesus is always the complete and total healer always. So for those that rely on medications and on therapy, you know, we had those videos. I was led to make a couple videos um, the, against Christian ASMR. And it was really hard because I could sense that people were really desperate that watch these videos, desperate for comfort, desperate for sleep, couldn't sleep at night. But it doesn't change the demonic nature of the videos and Holy Spirit to everyone who was like, well, what do I do then? Holy Spirit was like, just tell them to ask me for what I need. And people testified. I was able to sleep tonight. I asked Holy Spirit to help me and he helped me. Because if you are willing, and this keeps coming up lately, if you're willing to forsake the things of this world, the lies of this world, the temporary healings of this world. Yeah, okay, uh, you have anxiety, so you get anxiety medication and it seems to work from you. But you got to keep taking that medication every day. They had to keep getting in that pool at Bethesda every day. And every day they weren't healed. And every day, you know what they just did? They wasted precious time of their life. I remember a time where I was suffering greatly in my life. And I was talking to... I was seemingly like on my own. And... Somehow I get into contact with a, a, a woman and she's a believer. It was like on Facebook or something random. And she asked me very clearly, I'll never forget this moment. She was like, well, it comes down to, do you want to be healed? And I'll be honest, I was in such a self-pitying, depressed, point in the finger mode that I was like, you know what? No, I don't because I was mad and I wasn't. And it got worse. And that is the, the, the vast truth is that many don't want to be healed. Many are still in sin cycles because you prefer the sin because you haven't experienced freedom outside of it. And you have to trust the Lord enough to know that freedom from sin, whatever the sin is, is greater, is better. His plans for you are better than your plans. His healing is long-lasting and eternal and permanent, and you'll be on good terms with the Lord, then if you continue to allow yourself to settle for the ways of this world, the pattern of this world, which, which keeps people conformed to it every day, having to get in these waters that aren't healing anyone, to take these medications that just keep people attached to big pharma, to continue on drugs and in cycles and relationships because some people are so lonely because you won't seek the Lord. To continue broke and without any wisdom when it comes to money because you don't trust that the Lord will provide. If you are willing to trust the Lord, let's get that scripture. So I, I just pulled up the scripture. So I'm always surprised at how Jesus didn't go around to everyone at that pool. He didn't go around to everyone and start healing them all. Why? 
we know that when he went to Nazareth, people wouldn't believe. And so he didn't perform miracles. By people's faith, they were healed. In many ways, that's not just sickness or physical ailment. In many ways, delivered, healing, same thing. And we know Jesus knows the hearts of men. So through wisdom, we can assume that these people were addicted. They were addicted to going in that water every day. That was life. They were settling for that misery of life, settling for their ailment. Find, listen, we as humans can find comfort in the most toxic and dysfunctional of situations. And so often you'll settle for it and God will not force you out of it. So God knew, Jesus knew the hearts of men because he is Lord. And he says to him in, where are we? John 5. Verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said to him, will thou be made whole? He asked him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Because truly, you know, when I said that to that woman, I was like, no, you know what? I'm just good where I am type thing. But for months and months before, yeah, I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. But then comes the appointed time. See, I had grown weary in well-doing. I allowed myself to fall into an apathy, which is really dangerous because your deliverance doesn't always come right away for whatever reason. Maybe you don't truly believe. Maybe your heart and your heart, you don't really want to be healed. We can say, no, that's not true. But Jesus knows the hearts of men. By our faith, we truly are healed. So maybe we really don't believe yet. I know at the time I didn't. But when we grow weary of seeking him anyway, of being faithful to him, then comes the appointed time where healing is ready for us, where here comes the Lord's hand. And pff, no, I'm good. And he knew that wasn't the case with this man. So the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me because everyone else at the pool had someone to like help them, you know, like like a CNA today to help them into the water. And he didn't have anyone to help him. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And he is saying the same thing still to you today. Take up your mat and walk. You truly are healed by your faith. And if you've not been healed yet, healed yet, then it's faith that you need. Keep seeking the Lord. It took me a few years to be able to truly believe on this walk. But once you know the truth, you can either keep seeking him faithfully or you can keep falling off. And you can remain going in and out of that pool of Bethesda. You can remain in and out of those toxicities and addictions and whatever people get ensnared with in the world. We've all been there at one time or another. You can continue in the conformity of the pattern of the world back and forth. Or you can finally take up thy mat and walk and be set free forever from these things. Immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I wanna read this little piece from Christianity.com. Was it the man's own fault he had no one? Had he driven every possible helper away with his defeatist attitude, cynicism, or simply his own overwhelming neediness? How many people have been there? It's like repellent to anyone else when you're so broken hearted or, you know, sick or whatever it is, issues, you know, and, and people just the last thing, neediness just drives people away. Maybe over the years, his helpers had dropped like flies as they began to realize there was no point in wasting their time. Maybe they'd all refused to enable the man's delusional hope any longer. Why would the man continue to drag himself into the pool of Bethesda, knowing he had no one to help him enter the water? Perhaps his heart knew what his head had yet to discover. The man possessed so little hope that he couldn't answer Jesus' question directly. 
Instead, he replied with a statement that revealed a deeper, more painful burden than the need for a physical healing. I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I am trying to get in. Someone else goes down ahead of me. Some commentators describe the man's reply as a lame excuse. <laughs> the article says, no pun intended. But could it be that in the presence of the Lord, this desperate man unwittingly revealed a profound truth? Did his soul recognize the need for a helper, the helper, above any other need in his life? The man had no one to help him. Can you imagine? No one. Some of you can. The isolation must have been as emotionally and spiritually debilitating as his paralysis was physical. And this is what happens so many times that we do chase away people in our time of need, you know, and, and become so bitter and cynical that we blame them for, for leaving. When really, it's not the case. It's just that sometimes we can lose hope. And here this man was so close to losing hope, but the Lord will always, he's always in the right place at the right time. He'll always make it a divine appointment before you lose hope. And if you're willing not to say no to the Lord, not to be so weary of well-doing that you say no to him, then you too will take up your mat and walk by faith. Don't say no to the Lord. Don't be unwilling to receive healing. But also, don't stop being faithful to him in that interim. You see, this man desired to be healed. And every day he tried to go in that water. And at a specific appointed time, there was Jesus Christ again at the right place and the right time, a divine appointment. So if you're still waiting to be able to take up your mat and walk, well, you're waiting on a Lord that can't fail, an omnipresent God in Jesus' name who will come to you at an appointed time. And that's not yours to know. This man didn't know that Jesus was going to come. He didn't know especially when. You actually know the Lord, so you know that he can't lie. He wouldn't lie. He wouldn't leave you or forsake you. Continue to seek the Lord. Continue to seek the Lord. Your divine appointment awaits. But for whatever reason... You need to keep seeking him. I don't know. I know there's many. I mean, I, I, I hate to say, I don't know who that's for. I know there's many that are, are wrestling with various types of ailments. But you cannot grow weary of well-doing. Doing things by the Lord's way means not putting our expectations on him. Not expecting him to move when we say move. And don't forget that Jesus would then seek out this man later and say to him, now go and sin no more, or something worse will happen to you, indicating that that paralysis would be even worse, indicating that, like actually from the word yesterday, that some sort of sin had manifested into this great debilitation. And it does. That's what sin does. That's why we can't be so quick to excuse sin. Because it's death and it manifests as death through our body in various ways. But if you're willing, if you're willing to seek the Lord, the Lord will always make a divine appointment with you. Will always come and deliver you. Don't put time limits on it because you can't say to him, I don't want to keep being faithful if you're not going to come. It is your job to be faithful to him. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. And, and he calls you to follow him. This is always love first. This is always about love first. So be sure to follow the Lord and, and don't let your heart be hardened towards him because I testify to you to harden your heart towards the living God, towards Jesus Christ. Is, it's stupidity. It's easy to do, but it results in no healing and no miracle and, and, and eventually requiring deliverance, which is what I would eventually require because I let my heart grow hard in my time of waiting, in my time of need and desperation. You will take up your mat and walk. Continue to be faithful to the Lord and know that he still makes divine appointments. Okay, he's still the great physician. He makes house calls. And it's not your job or, or really need to know when. It is your need and, and job to seek him, to be faithful to him faithful to him, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes, be faithful to him. And you too will take up your mat 
and you will walk. You will be healed. You will no longer need the menial remedy of this world. 